Hi, I'm Courtney Sanborn at CourtneySanborn.com and Courtney in Illuminating Points YouTube channel. And I'm with Kathy Icing. Kathy. Hi, glad to be here today. Yeah, Kathy is my astrology friend, fellow astrologer, and really dear friend in Asheville. So we're going to put together some mini pods on what is astrology, um, so different, different digestible bits. So today's topic is what is the ascendant in astrology? What does it mean? How does it affect us? Um, and I think maybe start by just defining ascendant and rising sign are interchangeable. So when people ask you about um, your astrology digits, maybe, or like, what's your, what's your makeup? Like, what would you, what would you say? Like your sun, moon, rising? Yeah. 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 And astrologers tend to say, call it an ascendant. Ascendant. But in the more common vernacular, I think people say it's a rising sign. Yeah. So, so we'll, we'll say that ascendant and rising sign are used interchangeably. Interch yeah. yeah. So we will use them interchangeably today, but mostly probably be sticking with ascendant. So do you want to start out defining how you define the ascendant? Um, why don't you do that? Um, what it is, you know, in terms of, Oh, like how it falls. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the ascendant is a point on the horizon, the Eastern, the Eastern point of the horizon, the moment that we're born. Um, and it's the zodiac sign that happens to fall there. This point on the horizon changes about every two hours or so. And so this is why when you um, get your astrology reading, astrologers ask for your birth time, because then you're able to tell your ascendant. And, and I would maybe argue that the ascendant is a more, I don't want to say more important, but a really important part of of the astrological makeup. I think so many people know the sun sign and your sun sign is most of us are like, it's around our birthday. It's when we were born. And so most people know their sun sign, but you have to have a birth time to know your ascendant and the ascendant can often define people. I think almost more than their son. Yeah, I, yeah. I would agree with that. Cause it's really, when I think of the ascendant in someone, it's what I see first when I meet a person. Yeah. Is I see their ascendant. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the, I like to explain, it's like the outside of a book cover. Okay. You know, and the, when you pick up a book, you don't know the contents inside, but you see the outside of the book and immediately you make a judgment on the cover and you're like, okay, I feel like this book is about this just based on what you see. Then you open the book and you start to see more and you, you get a better feel. And that's kind of like what the rest of the astrology chart is to me. Does that resonate with you? Well, I would also, um, anchor the ascendant in the physical body it has to do with your physical body and your identity. Yeah. How you see yourself in the world. Definitely. So, yeah. Yeah. Do you have any other definitions on ascendant or any other thoughts before we go through the 12, we'll go through the 12 signs. No, I don't. Know. Yeah. You know, there's actually professional astrologers that, um, so it, like there, if you don't know your birth time, it can be, um, you know, you don't, you obviously don't, we can't figure out your ascendant. And so there's some, there's like a whole cohort, there's certain astrologers that will ask certain questions about things to determine a person's ascendant mm -hmm. and, and what it is if the birth time is missing. Um, and there's ways to retrieve that, you know, and guessing, but yeah, it's definitely the way somebody looks, the way somebody talks, the way they present themselves. So my ascendant is in Scorpio, yours. Uh, mine is in Leo. Yeah. <laughs> So, and you know, yeah, so yeah, so yeah. yours is a, a water sign, a water sign, and I'm fire. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so, but I, you know, I, I present, I think a little, a little intense, like a Scorpio. And then over time, as people get to know me, they start to see maybe my Cancer Sun and my Taurus Moon, and yeah, mm -hmm. some some more of the water qualities. And yeah, yeah, yeah. So you want to go through the 12 signs? Yeah. Okay. So we'll go through each um, of the 12 signs and explain what their ascendant point would look like, what this kind of the feel of it. So we'll start with Aries. Sure. Go ahead. Well, Aries is a, <clears throat> is a fire sign. So I would think that uh, an Aries ascendant would show up fiery, busy. They might be... Um, dynamic in how they present themselves mm -hmm. um, maybe speedy yeah. um, they might 
might ha- might have a big appetite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but in terms of how they present, I would say that there's a dynamism, a fire quality, and um, maybe a bit of a an all about me. Yeah. Um, cat quality. Yeah, because Aries is the one. I mean, it's more about me. Yeah, me. Um, and but there's also a really nice confidence to Aries. Mm. I feel like Aries people are just they're confident. They usually know what they want. They're willing to go for it. They're um, they don't second guess themselves. It can almost be like a childlike like confidence at times. It can be really beautiful. And and I feel like you could see signs in balance and out of balance. And I would say like an imbalance Aries has like a, a nice humble confidence and an out of balance Aries might seem a little arrogant or selfish. Yeah. And then um, uh, Aries rules the head. That's right. Yeah. Yes. And so each, each sign has kind of a certain look to it. Um, as far as like how an Aries looks, nothing's coming to me off the top of my head, but um, yeah, other, other signs, definitely we can go through those as we go. Do you have any other comments on Aries? I do. You want to go to Taurus? Let's go to Taurus. Go ahead. Okay. Taurus is um, an earth sign Mm -hmm. and uh, associated with beauty and um, groundedness. So I, a Taurus rising, I, I would, would give a feeling of confidence and presence mm. and solidness, groundedness when yeah. you meet someone. Um, and, and I also think that, that it would provide an appreciation for beauty. Yeah. Yeah. And Taurus and beautiful things. And beautiful things. Yes. Yeah. Beauty and beautiful yeah, and there's a sensualness, I think, about uh, Taurus. Like, there's there's slow moving, there's steady. And if you even think of it in, like, terms of, of a cow or a bull, which is the representation of, of Taurus, um, you know, they don't get angry easily. Like, if you look at a cow or you watch a cow, like, it kind of sits around chewing its cud. It's, like, slow to move. But then over time, if it's provoked it it takes a lot of energy momentum to move it but like once you move it you almost can't stop it and so they can be really intense but like I feel like Tauruses are pretty steady as far as their um their um uh first first meeting first encounter presentation yeah and then the look of a Taurus is usually really round eyes there's a roundness to a Taurus rising's eyes and then their nose is also a little round there's like a roundness to the nose and that goes on the Taurus Scorpio axis. Like uh, I have a very Scorpio Taurus nose. There's kind of a roundness to it. I don't know. Mm. Yeah. And if you look at my mom, she has, she's Scorpio rising. She has a similar Scorpio. Uh-huh. Nose. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And I, I would say also that it would lend itself to a more prominent, stable, physical appearance. Definitely. Like, yeah, maybe even stocky or yes. Um, full-bodied, mm-hmm. um, but, but you have to look at the rest of the chart. You, have you can't to. just look at one thing and make it, you have to take the whole picture Definitely. into consideration. Yep. But we can only. Yeah. But assuming they're, the person is Taurus rising with maybe another planet or two in Taurus, because again, the rising sign is often associated with appearance and physical body, yep. but yeah, they could have yeah, they're Mars and something, a whole other planetary configuration that makes the body look quite different. But yeah, yes. I agree with you on the stocky build. Okay. Yeah. So next, Gemini. Gemini rising. Yeah. Oh boy. Um, yeah, Gemini is an, another air sign mm-hmm. or an air sign. And um, Geminis tend to be quick mm-hmm. and can change from one thing to another. Mm-hmm. So in terms of an ascendant appearance, I get a Gemini rising as somebody that could look a lot of different ways. Yeah, like shape-shifting, <laughs> definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a shape-shifting quality. And, and maybe it also would lend itself to having a lot of different identities in a lifetime. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe, you know, a mother or a father at a certain point and a worker and, a, you know, just quite a number of different ways that, you show up in the world. 
Yeah. And the curiosity of Gemini, there's a, there's a childlike sense of the, through the curiosity of Gemini that, you know, they're, they're always learning like avid learners want to, you know, there's a saying like a Scorpio asks a question, like wanting to get to the depth of like what's going on more out of maybe a little bit of fear. Whereas like a Gemini asks a question out of like pure curiosity. Like, I just want to know, I like to learn, like it's, you know, it's yes. like enjoying information. Yeah. And so, yeah, Gemini's can be very playful, very fun, but yeah, that duality almost like, um, looking like two different people, like one person at one time, one the person, twins. the twins. Yeah. yeah. It's, you know, the representation of the twins. And then additionally, Gemini rules the shoulders and the fingertips, um, of, of the body. And so when you're talking about Gemini ascendant, but again, you have to take the whole chart into consideration because if you have somebody with just a Gemini ascendant and then the rest of the chart is an earth or their fingers may not look real Gemini. When I say Gemini fingers, they're very air like fingers. Um, they're long, they're thin. There's, there's kind of a, a lightness about a Gemini physique, you know, they're, yeah, they're usually not real stocky. They're, they're usually kind of, uh, thin and again, airy. Oh yeah. Yeah. Anything else you want to add? Oh, no. Okay. Um, so what's next? Cancer. Cancer rising. Oh, cancer. Cancer to me is the, is the caretaker Mm. of the signs and a cancer rising would present as someone who picks maybe a career path or or a way of taking care of themselves or others. Mm -hmm. Nurturing. Nurturing, yeah. And um, it's a water sign. Mm -hmm. So um, emotions are a big big part of the makeup. And they can either be out front or hidden, depending on what's going on in the rest of the chart. Yeah. but I, I think that the, the main thing to take into consideration is the, the quality of nurturing and caretaking and how that gets expressed in the life. For sure. Yeah. And it, the cancer represents the mother, not necessarily in the chart, but it's more of an archetype of the mother. And then cancer is ruled by the breasts um, of the body. So usually cancer rising are bustier women. There's a sense of, and there is kind of a nurturing mother like quality to, to a Cancerian. And again, since it's a rising sign, this may be the first thing you see. And then let's say that person has no other cancer placement in their chart. So you meet them and feel like there's a nurturing quality and then you get to know them and you're like, they're not nurturing at all, actually. Or Uh, perhaps there's more cancer, more qualities that add to that nurturance. And then there, but it's a very feminine sign. I feel cancer is even men with a lot of, uh, uh, Cancerian placements are usually quite sensitive and and in tune with emotions or the the subtler things in life. Yeah. There's a softness to Cancer. Yeah, and you can speak well to the next one. It's your ah, Leo yes, rising. Leo rising. That's yeah. my whole. Um, Leo's a fire sign, so I tend to show up with a lot of light. Yeah, doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to follow up with it. <laughs> But um, that that tends to be how I how I people perceive me right away. Um, I think we talked about Aries, and I think that Leo rising has also the quality to be a little self centered and mm-hmm. and um, but it shows up differently than the Aries. The Aries is a little bit more dynamic and with leo it's more about drama yeah it's more about showing off really nice distinguish yeah nice to separate Um, those yeah yeah um and yeah sort of the the downside of a leo rising is um the show off Mm. and having things be all about me yeah from a dramatic standpoint yeah um and probably a a more elevated expression of a Leo rising is, is confidence mm. and um, a sunny temperament. Yeah. And um, showing up in a, in a steady way. 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and Leo is very connected to the sun in astrology, the actual physical sun That's right? and our solar system. And if you think of like what the sun is archetypally and kind of what it represents, it's like this fixed figure of light that, you know, and Leo, the sign has always been associated with Kings and Queens. Um, and so when you think of like a King or Queen, there's people that work under them, but they're, they're usually up at the top kind of alone ruling the, you know, the kingdom or whatever. And there's this, there's this ability to be seen. I always love like, especially a Leo rising for sure. Leo rising, but anyone with strong Leo placements, I feel usually gets involved in drama at some point, or a lot of actors have a prominent Leo somewhere in their chart. Um, and I feel like Leo, yeah, they like being on stage. They like being seen. Like Leos are the people with the red sports car, <laughs> you know, or like the, okay. the flashy, the flashy okay. stuff. Yeah. But at the same time, again, you have to look at the rest of the chart placement yes. because you, you don't have anything other than your Leo rising really. And the rest of you is very signified. There is this Leo part of you, but then you don't have the red sports car. There's other parts of you that show that yes. you're much more into like the, yeah, the collective and group thinking. We'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah, we'll get there. We'll get yeah. there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So Virgo um, to Virgo. Yeah. Rising. Yep. Okay. So Virgo is another earth sign. Mm -hmm. And, um, hmm. again, Virgo, how does Virgo present as an ascendant? Yeah. Well, I think Virgo is, is you would want to give somebody with a Virgo, your things to do. Yeah. They would probably be very good at getting things done. Yeah, they're organized. Organized. Like and, cleanliness. Yeah, cleanliness and ability to sort through details. Yeah. And, um, you know, might be good at something like accounting or um, cleaning. Cleaning. Yeah. yeah. Or like putting things in order. They putting like things in order. They like yes. purity. Yes. Yeah. Purity also. Purification. Yes. There's a they're very dependable. Um, all earth signs are quite dependable. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I feel Virgo has this sense of purity. And then purity and then usually like a Virgo that. rising kind of belongs to no one ever. There are the a Virgo always kind of belongs to themselves. I think especially a Virgo woman. It's the the sign of the virgin. So okay. it's um is a symbol and yeah there's a sense of like uh purity also i've noticed virgo risings um are people that this is an anecdotal observation but um i find that a lot of virgo risings can be alone for a long period of time in between relationships or so the ones that can take you know four or five years in between a relationship and really kind of come into themselves and this kind of goes back to that idea that they 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 never really fully they don't belong to anyone else there's a that that's where the quality of purity purity comes, comes from, from yeah. yeah because they want to get to that essence in themselves before they give themselves away again yep exactly and there's a mer mercurial sense to um to a virgo rising too in the sense that they can be a little bit of a trickster or a jokester um communication is oftentimes involved in there but yeah and that's kind of that's my take on virgo rising Any okay other? no i i go into libra Ah, yeah. Libra rising. Libra is another air sign. Mm -hmm. And um, the first thing that comes to me about Libra is balance. Yeah. And uh, Libra rising would be someone who is very, is, is very concerned with balance in their life. Yeah. Um, I'm, how, how it shows up physically, you might be uh, aware of not getting too fat or getting too thin. Yeah. Um, and might identify with something that, that keeps the bigger picture. Mm, balance. Balance. Um, and I think the, the uh, shadow side is the codependent, making other people's mm. needs, wants, feelings more important than your own. Yeah, for sure. And the um, the well expressed side of Libra is just being able to see both sides and and balancing things. Yeah, keeping things in order. Yeah, keeping keeping priorities straight. Yeah, and I think a, a difficult thing for 
Libra risings or anyone with a lot of Libra placements is that ability to see both sides makes it difficult to see a to make a decision. Uh -huh. And so there can be an indecisiveness over time of, I can see it going this way. I can see it going that way. And with, the air, there's a sense of like logic that, you know, both of these make sense. I could see them both working out and not being able to feeling paralyzed and decision-making. Um, but Libra rules the kidneys. And then Libra is the only object in the Zodiac that the representation, the archetype of Libra is the scales, the, the balancing, balancing scales. scales. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And everything else is either an animal or a person or a combination of the two. Mm -hmm. So Libra is the only innate object in the, um, in the zodiac as the scales and what do they say like lady justice which is libra you know she had a blindfold on you know and so justice she, is blind justice is blind like you don't you know you so there's this ability to libras can be really difficult to argue with if you are very attached to something because they can always see both they sides. can always see both sides <laughs> so this, this is why a lot of people with prominent libra um, qualities end up in law like working in law or are great lawyers and, and Libra is associated with the law. Mm -hmm. um, as, yeah. As far as like just a, the fairness around that, but also I, I kind of view like Libra, the beauty of Libra is like, like white walls in a modern museum with like one piece of like very classic, simple artwork on the wall and maybe a simple plant. Like that's like Libra beauty. And like Taurus beauty is more like opulent, opulent. Yeah. Okay. It's like a bunch of women in sundresses, flowered sundresses <laughs> on a picnic blanket by a river surrounded by flowers on a sunny day, <laughs> you know, maybe drinking wine and eating foie gras, like, <laughs> but like Libra is much more minimal and minimalist. Yeah. Huh? Minimal and like huh. a, a little more like modern and classic, like, like, um, I have a good friend that has a lot of Libra placement in her and she's an artist and her art blends a lot of elements. So she takes like woodworking metal, um, like a little bit of drawing and the different stones and combines them all into art. And the art is very simple and like very clean lines, but it's very, very beautiful, very artistic. And this is kind of Libra to me. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So it's blending of opposites. Yeah. And, and, and elements. elements. Yeah. Elements. Okay. Yeah. Great. Okay, next Scorpio. Well, you got to take the lead on this okay, one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so Scorpio rising, which is me. Um, I'm Scorpio rising. Very intense, I think, is also is one of the things about Scorpio. If you think about Scorpio as far as the seasonal time of the year in the Northern Hemisphere, um, Scorpio is the month of November. And in November, the dark is getting darker. Like we're losing light. And so there's this, we're going into the darkness and there's this feeling of going into the darkness and this adds a real depth to anything. So Scorpio is like getting to the bottom of everything. And my mom with all of her Scorpio placement, her, her Scorpio rising, and she has a ton of planets in Scorpio. We joke that like when the neighbor's house is on fire, she's more concerned about like what, like getting to the bottom of they're like Scorpio rising, like it's a detective, like they must know, like, let's get to the bottom of this. Let's get to the root of this, which is very much a Scorpio, um, just mentality of, of, of figuring out like, where did this come from? Like more, more, more need more knowledge, more information. Um, and then, uh, Scorpio's rule rules are reproductive organs. So again, a Scorpio ascendant can um, and I say this actually with all of the, with all of the rising signs of different organs that they rule, they, there can, there can often be at, at times like health issues around those organs as we, as age. we age or, or throughout life, like I'm Scorpio rising. And when I was um, younger, I had irregular pap smears a lot, you know, mm -hmm. and ruled by the reproductive organs, like nothing cancerous or anything, but like they would regularly come back when I was in balance, that's where it would show up in my body. So, and the, the thing that uh, comes to mind is the symbol scorp scorpion submerged in a body of water. Yeah. So that, that speaks to the detective, the figuring out it's underneath the surface and the scorpion has lots of ways that it presents. It can come out and bite. Yeah. It can move around the ground quickly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, um, but it, it lies in the water and it waits for the right opportunity yeah. to come out. So there's that quality of um, 
timeliness. Definitely. Definitely. And patience. Yeah. You know, there, there's always been kind of a joke about like, you never want a Scorpio to take revenge on you because mm. there can be a, a deep vindictiveness. That's like the, maybe I would say the shadow side, side yeah. is like waiting to, you know, um, cause there, but also that also comes from this deep, deep sensitivity that's Scorpio. Scorpio is a very misunderstood sign, but there's a deep, deep sensitivity. And so the ability, ability to feel things very deeply, which, and a positive expression of that is tremendous empathy, understanding for where you are and another person. Definitely. Is. Yeah. And courage. Scorpio can be a very courageous sign. Yeah. Um, anything else we missed there? You think? On to the next. On to the next. Okay. Sagittarius. Rising. Okay. You want to? Um, Sagittarius is um, fire sign. Fire sign. Um, I see Sagittarius as an explorer. Mm -hmm. And uh, Sagittarius likes to travel and be an adventurer and explore things, but more more in a in a learning kind of way and yeah in a um um sensitivity to higher learning to um how how major themes get expressed in life yeah because it can be the philosopher like the sage mm -hmm. is a lot of a lot of great spiritual teachers have a, a strong sagittarius placement mm -hmm. in their chart yeah, learning, you know, what do you identify with as a learner? What types of schools of learning, of thought, of... Yeah. yeah. There can be a great bluntness to somebody with Sagittarius rising, just what you, I think, what you see is what you get, and they speak their mind. Mm. Um, and that's kind of known, you know, Sagittariuses are just known to kind of just speak the truth and just blurt it out and not really... Um, you know, they can say that they're, they're biting their tongue a lot or, or are corrected, but they, um, they may not have what we would call like pol political, they're not political when they speak. There's like maybe missing a little bit of tact, but it's honest. There's a great honesty in Sagittarius. Um, additionally, the symbol of Sagittarius is half horse, half man. So it's like the horse body. And then from the torso up, it's man. And Sagittarius has have an arrow um, a bow and arrow with an arrow cocked in it, ready to shoot. And this is all about aim and intention. And whenever I see, whenever I see a client with Sagittarius rising, I really emphasize the importance of being aware of like the intention behind everything they do in life, because intention is a very big part of, of being a Sagittarius um, and the, the subtleties of um, why are we doing this? Yeah. Why are we doing what this? What is this? What does this mean to me? Yeah. <laughs> and getting clear on that. I think that's true for all of us. Agreed. Agreed. All our signs. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> but but yeah. it's particularly highlighted in Sagittarius. Okay. So yeah. so a shadow side would be I, I acting and shooting that arrow without knowing what your motive is. Exactly. Yeah. Just going too quick, being really uh, abrupt because it's very easy for them to be abrupt. And my brother has a lot of Sagittarius in him. And he kind of walks into a room and he can just, you know, and he's quite funny because he really speaks the truth. You know, the truth is often quite funny, but to, in, in certain crowds, it can be offensive or, you know, and, and so it's like, you know, to Sagittarius, it would be like, know your audience, <laughs> know your intention, but they're also really great. If you want the truth to be told, if you want like a strong opinion, they're really, really great uh, people for that. Sagittarius is ruled by the thighs. So the upper leg, the thighs. And I see this actually in, um, I don't know, there, you can, you can see these things. I mean, it's very subtle in bodies, but again, somebody with like a strong Sagittarius, let's say they're Sagittarius rising and have other strong Sag planets in their chart. You'll, you'll notice that there's just something about like their torso area that you're drawn to when you look at their body or, you know, there's something unique there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Okay. Capricorn, you can speak so well to Capricorn. Capricorn rising. Yeah, Capricorn rising. Um, Capricorn is a is a builder. Capricorn is another earth sign. Mm -hmm. And um, she, I believe she's a feminine sign. Yeah, because earth is feminine. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
builder, planner. Um, it it really rules business in some ways. Mm-hmm. Some of the some of the um, so Capricorn rising would come on would would present as someone who's quite capable. Definitely capable and ability to handle things, but in a different way than the Virgo. The Virgo is, handles the details, yeah, and is dependable in that way. But Capricorn is more would be more like the authority, like the CEO. Yeah, the CEO. Yeah, yeah. And then the Virgo works under the Capricorn. Yeah, and then maybe the Taurus comes in and makes things beautiful and uh-huh. and, and uh-huh. keeps them yeah steady. Yeah, but yeah, definitely. But builder, I see yeah. that as a as a primary. Yeah, and I actually see a lot of people with a with a lot of Capricorn in their chart usually work in finance in some way. Yeah, CPAs or accountants. Yeah, it seems to you want a Capricorn handling your money because they're usually pretty. They're a little risk adverse. I mean, yeah, we're just practical. Yeah, like, yeah, when they take risks. Yeah, um, yeah, well, on the conservative side. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. knees. Cap- Capricorn rule the knees. Yeah, and the bones. Oh, okay. Like the bones in the body, yeah, knees and bones for sure. That's kind okay. of um, okay. Aquarius rising. Okay, Aquarius is an air sign, and I, I think I feel a little more confident with Aquarius because I have some personal planets in Aquarius, yeah. and that makes it easier to identify with when mm-hmm. you have a personal planet in a yes. in a sign. Um, I think of Aquarius as. Well, Aquarius rising is someone who has a humanitarian outlook. Yeah. Where it brings in the consciousness of the group, the yeah. consciousness of the whole. What's for the what's good for the what's good for the group, what's yeah. good for the whole, not just as a as a in contrast to Leo and Aries, which would be all about me in different yeah. kinds of ways. Which those people are also necessary. The Absolutely. the individual people that are concerned about the individual are necessary for the Absolutely. you know the planet as well. Yeah. Yes. Um, but the Aquarius tends to be more about the group mentality, the people. Um, and I think a shadow side of Aquarius can be a um, a leader going awry. Definitely. Yeah. Or some aloofness, aloofness just like kind of checked yes. out. Yeah. Checked out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the other thing about unreachable. Yeah. Cold. Cold. Yeah. Yeah. Would be de- or detached maybe a little more yes. is, is maybe the word detached versus cold. I also feel like Aquarians are usually very ahead of their time. You know, they're, they're able to see, um, see things into the future. And usually they march to the beat of their own drum. My nephew has a lot of Aquarius in him. I love Aquarian people just because they usually are pretty quirky and um, are usually pretty open to trying new age stuff. Kind of feel like I kind of see an Aquarius, like if I were to describe them as a person, it would be like somebody, you know, driving a Tesla, like Bitcoin feels very Aquarian to me. Um, Stuff like that into the future, you know. Um, Yeah, looking at uh, like climate change stuff looking at like how global events like that and then how can I make affect the collective affect the collective. Yep. Um, and then Aquarius is ruled by the shins and in calves like the lower leg mm, place of surrender. Yeah, for sure. Shin and calves. Yeah. Mm. Yep. And then finally Pisces. Pisces. Well, she's a water sign. Yep. Go ahead. It's water. Um, Pisces is a, uh, uh, Pisces ascendant will present in a way of um, usually deep sensitivity that also can, can have, it's a little, the aloofness of a Pisces can be a little different than the aloofness of an Aquarius. Like a, an Aquarius is, is like, is detached. Uh, uh, somebody with a strong Aquarius in them usually I feel makes um, good therapists because there's this ability to be with and be detached from it. Whereas like mm-hmm. Pisces, if a Pisces is detached, it's usually from self-protection. Self-protection. They're so sensitive. Um, these are very open people. They're so sensitive that they are taking on other people's stuff. And the detachment is like, I can't, I can't handle this. So there's a checkout or maybe a, that would be more of the Pisces. But usually, again, very, very spiritual in some way. Yes. And, and yes, spirituality and, and an openness to the bigger truth 
yeah. is one of the positive expressions of Pisces. Definitely. And then, and then the, the shadow side is, is getting caught in delusion. Yeah. Getting caught in the unreal. And yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, um, I think too, Pisces people are just really naturally in touch with like spirit and matter, you know, mm-hmm. um, they're really, they're, they're porous. They're usually pretty empathic. And, mm-hmm. and I, I feel like somebody with a lot of Pisces in them, it's just, uh, the world isn't made for them, unfortunately. And they're, they're who we need. They're the artists or the feelers or the musicians or, and so Pisces rising, Again, it depends on what the rest of the chart is, you know, what's going on. If they only have Pisces rising and the rest of the planets are, are elsewhere. In, yeah, elsewhere, like a fire sign or something, say that it may show up a little differently, but usually a deep sensitivity and a softness. I think Pisces, uh, there's a, a softness to Pisces. Yeah. yeah. Anything? Oh, and Pisces rule the feet. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Anything else you want to say about the ascendant? Well, maybe we'll give a tip if you want to find your ascendant, you'll have to know your exact birth time. Um, and you can go to any sort of astrology website and just Google, you know, um, if you have one you, I use Astro King would be or Astro Deeds. Yeah. Yeah. Like any of those. Yeah. And enter in your, your birth time and then your, your rising ascendant. And you'll get it. We'll come up. Your yeah. For free. For free. Mm-hmm. And then I'm also doing the, um, until the end of the year, uh, I can, if you uh, subscribe and leave a comment on the podcast um, on Apple, which the details are are in this um, podcast, I'll send you a little audio with it. So if you would like a reading ever by Kathy, she's in the process of putting up a website, but you can email us at illuminatingpointspodcast um, at gmail.com and set up a reading through there. And I can connect you with Kathy, but Kathy will be with us regularly for astrology. So thank you for joining us. Oh, my yeah. pleasure. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Okay. Take care, guys.